It is my honor to introduce our first guest to you. We have an amazing lineup this morning. And we're gonna kick off this morning's general session with a leader you all know and love, someone who has had a hand in both shaping and growing the pro-life movement of the United States. Kristen Hawkins is the president of Students for Life of America and Students for Life Action. She is a strong leader, the mastermind behind making sure you have what you need to serve at every single season of life. She has created a country now with ground game in every single state of our nation. Please join me in welcoming Kristen Hawkins. Go, go. Ready? Because it's iconic, and I love to do iconic things. Wanna, wanna take a picture? We gotta get everyone in a photo. Let's get you all in a photo before I talk. Your lens is on. <laughs> I've done this before, I swear. Hi. Just, come on, Kevin! All right, you all needed to be in that photo. I don't like all the photos of me. Hey, pro-life Jen. How does it feel to know that you, this generation, will be the ones to end the violence of abortion, empowering mamas, saving babies from the pain and exploitation of the abortion industry. How does that feel? It's pretty damn awesome. This morning, I'm so deeply honored to be standing beside you, watching you change minds about abortion, serve mothers, save babies, pressure our elected officials, Democrats, and the bad Republicans, transform your campuses and your communities. It continues to be the greatest honor of my life after becoming a mother. Your conviction, your stories that you share with me, and yes, your social media posts, did you see me doing a TikTok just there, about the victories you have achieved this year, they constantly remind me that God has a plan for every one of us, and it's far greater than we can even imagine. You know, growing up, I only met my paternal grandfather once, when I was four or five. I remember I kept a little sticker of the, the cat in Alice in Wonderland uh, that he sent me one year for a, a birthday card in my special little chest as a child. A couple years ago, uh, that man died. There wasn't a funeral held to honor his life, which left so many scars on my father. But I remember thinking at the time, how odd, that despite the, the bad things that man had done in his life, good would prevail with his last name, Mercer. As I would carry it on in my life and the lives of my children and his great, -grand, you know, his great grandchildren that he never knew their names or even met. But I didn't even expect the additional bonus plans that God had made. You see, yesterday evening, while I was trying to make a quick exit to my hotel room after a cold and long day, you might know something about that, um, a beautiful young girl came running towards me. And I thought she likely just wanted to say hello or grab a quick picture for the gram, but no. Rebecca had something she had to say to me and someone to show to me. You see, Rebecca came to Washington to thank me for the videos she's seen of you all hosting me on your campuses. You know, there's ones where you'll let me come to campus and stir up trouble and maybe I buy you some Chick-fil-A. Yeah. And then you share them and make them viral. Because of those videos that you share, because of those videos you make viral of this super uncool mom of four, you help this woman who is homeless and desperate courageously 
choose life for her son. And she named him, and she named him Mercer. Now, I'm, if you know anything about me, I'm from West Virginia, so I'm pretty sure I can't trace my lineage back to some king or some castle lord in the old world. Um, and growing up, I always, as, as I said, it felt weird to carry this last name from this guy who had hurt and abandoned my father and his mother. But last night, that was a sweet name to hear, Mercer, for Rebecca's little baby boy. Because of you, Baby Mercer just turned one. And my grandfather, a broken man, who created my dad, a great man, who then created me with a little help from my mom, <laughs> now has a legacy that goes further than me and my sister and our children, but now extends further down the south to Alabama, to baby Mercer, and the good he will do in our world. Men and women, I share this with you today because I want you to think right now, right here about the legacy you and this pro-life generation will leave on this earth. For I believe each one of us is destined to do something. In fact, I believe we're all destined to do so many things great. And I can't think of anything greater than saving millions of baby boys and baby girls and sparing millions of mothers from the violence of abortion. That is why, you can clap, it's fine. It's ending abortion, it's, it's clapping. That is why today, this is your moment at the National Pro-Life Summit, and it's critical for you and critical for us as we move forward to achieve the pro-life movement's ultimate goal, equal rights for all, born and pre-born. Today, today you get to choose to do the great thing and join us to make abortion unthinkable and unavailable and make abolishing abortion your family legacy. Now I'm gonna be real with you. As you know, I always am. Ending the violence of abortion will not be easy. There will be obstacles in our way, and I promise you they're gonna be more difficult to overcome to get into Washington, D.C. in five to eight inches of snow on crappy old buses. We've seen these obstacles this year in real life, in Ohio, in Kentucky, and on our campuses, the well-funded, regressive 1970s resistance who mobilized after becoming enraged after Roe's reversal and who have sadly, so sadly, have fallen for the lies of the predatory abortion industry led by Planned Parenthood. And unfortunately, this really hasn't been unexpected. For the British didn't lay down their firearms and return to England after General Washington crossed the Delaware and surprised them in Trenton that night. American soldiers on both sides of the Civil War didn't return back to their farms and their divided families after Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation. The Third Reich didn't end their reign of evil after the British rescued 338,000 Allied soldiers on the beaches of Dunkirk, France. No. In every struggle between good and evil, we know the enemy's outrage can be wielded as a powerful weapon. However, the key to victory always lies in those who persist. And that's what those on the other side just don't understand about us, that we will never go away. In the 50 years that we lived under the tyranny of Roe and the many, trust me, many, setbacks that we faced during those five decades, our movement grew only larger and stronger and more successful. We're like the Continental Army who challenged the greatest army on earth without the resources and never relented. The strategy of General Nathaniel Green, who was there that night with Washington when they crossed to Delaware, he said his strategy was this, we fight, get beat, rise, and we fight again. And it worked until the enemy was out of supplies in Yorktown and surrounded. And now, 
here in 2024, in this post row era, we resolve to do the same. We will fight, and yes, sometimes we will get beat, but we will rise and we will fight again until we accomplish the great thing of abolishing abortion in our lifetime. That's why today, I'm honored to announce to you that our teams at Students for Life of America, Students for Life Action, the Campaign for Abortion-Free Cities, Standing With You, the Dimitri Institute for Pro-Life Advancement, no, I don't sleep, have organized under one banner, the pro-life generation. Together, we will grow even larger and louder with Students for Life continuing to serve and train you so that you can change the minds of your peers and save babies. With Standing With You, we will continue to help you change policies on your campus so no woman ever again feels like she has to choose abortion. With Students for Life Action, we will hold our elected leaders, Republicans and Democrats, accountable to their constituents and do the hard thing, not the easy things, to end the violence of abortion. With the Institute for Pro-Life Advancement, we will expand the efforts to halt chemical abortions, the leading cause of infant death in America, by fighting our state capitals here on Capitol Hill, every computer, on every campus, in front of every CVS, Walgreens, and Rite Aid. With the Campaign for Abortion-Free Cities, we will mobilize graduated Students for Life alumni and pro-lifers of all ages. We don't discriminate here in the pro-life movement. That's them. We go door to door educating our neighbors, promoting pregnancy resource centers, and teaching our movement how to defend against radical pro-abortion ballot referendums. You are student for life for maybe eight years. If I'm lucky, I get you for that long. But you will be part of the pro-life generation forever. So today I want you to join me. Create your legacy and do the great thing. Right now, go to prolifegen.org and pursue your purpose in the pro-life movement. Then, Use all your time today at the National Pro-Life Summit wisely, learning everything you can by the team of experts we've assembled for you. And tonight, when you leave here and get back on that bus, I'm sorry about that, commit to always persisting, always, for them, for Rebecca and baby Mercer. And I promise you, I promise you, we will prevail. Be not afraid of the obstacles that will stand in our way, for we were born to fight and finally achieve equal rights for all. For we are the pro-life generation. Thank you.